skills in his cloud up at 150 percent grab the kill grab won't be enough but there he got out the charge he had to use it just to get back to the stage and in the middle he's gonna get thrown off again roman just playing his oh, game with the spike coming down absolutely worth it there in the end as you can see he will get doctor skills to use his limit bar and get him off the map almost able to do that. If he just gets his feet planted, I feel like uh, Roman might be able to make it back, but oh, he managed to make the recovery. The Magna Hand's coming through, but the um, Blade Beam with the limit on top of it. Get your barometers ready at home, folks, because yeah. we have Clouds out today. And as we're setting up for our next match here, it's uh, not too sure who, who it's going to be. You can see there in the top right part of your screen that there are a lot of people here at the Game Gym in Potomac, Maryland. Just a quick shout out for the game gym as well. If you are interested in finding a place where you can up your game, do come out here. We offer a multitude of classes with a collegiate amount of coaches in between League of Legends, Smash Brothers, and Overwatch so far. It's growing, it's going to be great, and it seems that we're going to be setting up our next match here. Me with this Lucas player in particular is all about not willing to give Duck Hunt the moments of time to consider his livelihood. Always freezing him, throwing out his PK fires, Always trying to stay on top of this fight. Only 64% and then the smash? And he's actually been playing since the game first came out. It was his first competitive smash game. And uh, he, even though he plays Mario now, excuse me, his original name or main was Ness. And then I think he ended up like switching off kind of earlier last year or so. So a bit newer, but the Ness definitely still has it as we see right there. Just that back throw, throwing corn off the side. It's just so powerful. That psychic throw has always been strong. Speaking of Smash 64, we have a legend himself in Ness. has always been a strong character to face against. At least in my opinion, that might just be uh, might just be my matchmaking or just how I play in general. Uh, but Ness himself he has a lot of zoning abilities and a lot of final hit capabilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his ability to kill is very strong. That's why people thought he was one of the strongest characters in the earlier builds of this game. No lie. Yeah, he can kill you with like up air, back air. Um, any smash attack of his. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. And he's kind of an old school, like, veteran now, actually. Wow, I've known these guys for like four years. <laughs> wow, hey, what do you think about it? That's, that's the Smash community for you folks. I mean, it's been around for a while. I brought up Smash 64. I remember playing that game way back in my basement when I was a wee young. And now we have these kids learning how to play. It's about to be Smash Ultimate here in a couple months as well. So, I mean, they're... Sitting here, they're learning off of the newer ones, and that's one of the better parts about having these high, uh, the well-known players that we have in here today from a multitude of areas such as Xanadu, specifically teaching and showing how strong these characters can be. Using that slingshot to carry Captain Falcon all the way to the side, and look at that ledge trapping again. How does Beck get out of here? The ledge trapping is just so, so clean coming out from Kree. Beck is just having a hard time finding himself. Like, Villager is one of those characters who just looks, haha, funny, but then you look at your sounds like, that's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of damage coming out. We were talking about this earlier here at the gym as well, before the tournament even started, about this tree, wow. and that's where you gotta be careful. There, and he gets a back air for his trouble. Now what's the mix-up on the ledge? Mr. M gets straight up in the banana, but doesn't get anything after that. But Logic still with the ledge touch of the down tilt. So forward air tries to do something fancy, keeps the fanciness going, but Mr. M able to make it back. Able to make it back with 160% to Captain's name as well. So any sort of tilt, any sort of smash will finalize this stock for Logic. You see the grab with a couple spanks there as well. Not enough to kill, but oh, enough to disdain in that little banana peel, like you said, cheeky, but still got him in stock. He saves his life. A lot of damage being accrued over to Booty King's Bayonetta and Diddy Kong. Seagull Joe, like you said, it's a methodical play from this very veteran player really showing up here. Um, Buddha King himself has also just played three games and matches in a row, so it could be a slight bit of nerves here coming into the Grand Finals against a juggernaut of Seagull Joe. But Buddha King, he's not ready to give up quite yet. Mm -hmm. and on the other side of things, it might be Buddha King riding the hot hand. He is warmed up and ready to fight, whereas Joe did have to cool off after his uh, winner's final set, so that momentum could count for something, and Buddha King doing a good job bringing it back. Nice facing by Joe, and just throw him, look for the down tilt up smash a little too early for it to kill, but it should work again, and it should kill this time around. So Joe's just gonna sit and wait patiently for that opportunity to pop up. But now, he might be a bit too high for down tilt up smash to work, but... As we load in here to the battlefield version. Or, oh, it's just, yep, just down center. Yeah, town and city, the classic. Oh yeah. 
Lots of good platforms to be played around, which does play into the favor for both these characters and both of these players' picks as well. Diddy Kong and Bayonetta are very comfortable to play in between all of these platforms as well. It's only when both these players get each other up past 100% that it can kind of shut down a lot of kill potential. The only time when it doesn't is, again, like we've mentioned earlier, that this has a very low sky skybox. <laughs> Just a small stage in general. Yeah, it really is. And that's why a lot of players like it, because it just kind of... If you're winning... Oh, nice! Not going in as much as he did against Logic and in previous matchups like Kree as well. Mm -hmm. And it's partially because Seal's forcing him to play at this pace. He's forcing him to play at Seagull's pace. And... For these smash attacks to lose his last stock and to go down 2-0. Well, there's the problem. Luckily, the side B doesn't hit again. And I think that was the last time we'll see a Witch Twist kind of cause Seagull Joe. But Seagull Joe, with this methodical play, punishing Booty King for this. Oh, but this might be a problem. Booty King gets a Witch Time, drops one up air, but still is in a solid position. Joe is SDIing down for his life, but Booty King has the read, and that adds up so much damage. Although you didn't die, you are at a deficit. That deficit. Is kill parts is a kill move away. One more juggle like that in the right part of the skybox, and Booty King can take the stock off of Seagull Joe. You can see Seagull Joe now playing more methodical, playing more patiently than he has in the past as well. Another wish spell. Oh. That, yes, is just enough to kill. Now, this is the first time Booty King uh, draws first blood. And he doesn't have that much damage. Soft reset, only difference is 3% worth of damage. It means absolutely nothing in that sense. Booty King understands that. He wants to add on more. Mm -hmm. Going right in there, but maybe a little bit too hard. Gives Joe an opportunity, but that power shield means that it's uh, Booty King's turn to play again. But missing two down airs after up throws, uncharacteristic. Uh, Booty King must be mixing up his DI pretty well. Booty King really showing us. We were talking about it earlier in his series against Logic. He is a very good player. Very smart and very methodical with his play. The only player in the room to do it better tonight is the man he's up against. Seagull Joe is one stock away from taking this tournament. And it's a convincing stock at the moment. 105% to Seagull Joe's 30. That banana could have been it, but he wants to bracket a little bit more percent. Battlefield's blast zones are big, so having a bit of insurance never hurts. That is true. Insurance is always good to have, especially when you are on the final lick. And that will do it. One up smash will give Seagull Joe the first flex tournament victory. Your champion this time round is Seagull Joe. Congratulations, Joe. Congratulations to him. And something to add, I don't think he dropped a game. Oh my god, you're right. Yeah, I don't think he dropped a game this entire time. So, oh my god. Uh, not only a win, but a display of dominance. And that's exactly what Joe wanted to get his head back into it. He got maybe like seventh or fifth at Xandu this week. Not characteristic of him, but he's like, you know what? I can still do it. I can still beat everyone in this room. Let me show you. And he did. And damn well showed us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Seagull Joe, your champion of Flex here. See him right there with our golden dung bell as well as packing up everybody you can see everybody funneled out pretty heavily here at the game gym as well it was a fantastic night of games here j dog i hope you enjoyed your stay here with us i did i did i'll definitely be coming back in the future because that was a lot of fun yeah absolutely yeah. whether as thing with you yeah oh thank you so much I mean, you'd be surprised again at home my first smash cast with legendary j dog himself here at the game gym I appreciate you all for stopping by. Don't forget to give this man a follow. He is a legend within his own self at jdog926. You can find me at Pokemon Panda, PKM and Panda, both on Twitter. And don't forget to follow the Game Gym's Twitter as well at Game Gym Esports. We are here in Potomac, Maryland. This was First Flex Fridays. Thank you all so much.